Most people will look for property deals either on Rightmove, Zoopla, they might use the local estate agent, or if they're feeling really brave, they might have a look in the auction. However, I can tell you after 15 years of being in this business, the best deals that we've come across have been the ones not available in the public. In this video, I wanna share with you three strategies that you can use to find those elusive off-market deals. If you're watching my channel for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain, and on this channel, I share with you my 15 years of property investing experience to ultimately help you get further faster in your own property investing journey. Firstly, let me explain the difference between on-market and off-market deals. When someone's looking to sell a property, they might go along to their local estate agent, ask them to value it and put it on the market, effectively for sale or maybe enough go off to auction. Effectively, this is available in the public domain for everybody to be able to see and this uh, property is what we call being marketed on market. It's openly available for everybody to see. Off-market deals, on the other hand, are those that are not being advertised in the public domain and not very easy for somebody to spot that it may be available for sale. This is what we call off-market property, and the reason that somebody might be looking to sell a property off-market, you might be thinking, well, why don't they just go to the estate agent and let them sell it for them? There could be many reasons. Some of the reasons, for example, it may be that somebody's looking for a discrete sale. They don't necessarily want everybody to know that they are selling their property, so they don't want it advertised in the public domain. It could also be that people don't want to sell through an estate agent. They don't like the idea of working with agents. It may be they don't want people trotting through their property and all the neighbors and everybody being nosy and coming through the property and looking at their property. The other reason that we found, the most common reason, it may be that they've just been approached with a proposal when they weren't even thinking about selling. So you might be thinking right now, Saj, that sounds great, but how are we gonna find these off-market deals when we don't even know that they're available for sale? So as I said, I'm gonna share three core strategies with you. The first one, and my most favorite one, is to work with other property professionals. By other professionals, what I mean are people that operate within the property sector. They work primarily in the property area as opposed to being property investors themselves. So for instance, mortgage brokers, people who help arrange finance for people that are looking to purchase property is a great contact. And if you're trying to make the connection thinking, how's a mortgage broker gonna help you find an off-market deal? Well, I remember years ago, one of my most uh, favorite mortgage brokers I used to work with at that time, what he would do, he was working in a lot of situations where, for example, uh, this was sort of pre-credit crunch, where they were remortgaging property. And when, as the credit crunch start to happen, and what we started to find that there were many fewer products or much fewer products in the marketplace that somebody could use to remortgage a property. And then there may have been situations where somebody was unable to refinance to do whatever they intended to and they might consider selling the property. So he would essentially say to them, hey, look, you know, I work with uh, somebody who buys property because your mortgage has now not gone through and we're not able to really help you in this situation because they've exhausted all options. Maybe you could have a chat with this property investor as they might be able to purchase a property for you and still be able to help you achieve what you were looking to do once you'd completed the refinance. Now a mortgage broker probably wasn't the obvious place you'd look, but you can see the connection on how they can start bringing you potentially very good opportunity. So it's building relationships with people that operate in this sector. So let's look at another example, letting agents. You think, well, letting agents, they manage and let property. What are they gonna do with finding suitable properties for you? And as an owner and operator of letting agencies, I can tell you that we get approached regularly from people looking to buy property because we manage primarily HMOs in the Birmingham area. We'll often get people getting in touch with us and say, hey, look, if you've got any of your landlords that might be looking to sell or considering exit, get in touch with us. So this is where effectively what we're doing, this property is not available on the market, it's not been advertised, but we might be able to match them up with a potential buyer for that particular property. So again, it's looking outside of the box and thinking who are the people that operate in this sector? I mean, give you another example, architects. So architects, you're thinking, how's that one gonna work then, Sad? With architects, they'll be making planning applications for changes to property, and sometimes they'll get approved, and other times they might get refused. And either way, these things can sometimes take a month, two months, three months, and they could take many, many months. I had one that dragged on for a couple of years, which is really frustrating. But the point being, applications can take a very long time. During that time, 
the owner of that property, their circumstances might change, their appetite for what they wanted to do with that property might change. So whether the application has been approved or refused at that time, the architect can always speak to the owner and say, hey, look, you know, I'm working with a property investor that's interested in buying properties. So, you know, if you're considering selling, I can put you in touch with him and have a chat with him and he can get something wrapped up for you. Now, this might be on a successful planning application or it may even be one that's been refused. However, what you've got to look at is the angle of how you can make it work. Remember, in any of these cases, you're not committed to buying that property. It's an opportunity for you to look at it. It's a leader that you've generated direct to the owner of the property that you would not have ordinarily seen. Another property professional is solicitors, particularly conveyancing solicitors. And the way that I work with conveyancing solicitors is if they have a chain that they're trying to complete a transaction within and somebody within that chain pulls out, that means that all the other transactions will pretty much fall apart unless somebody steps in and picks up that particular purchase. And of course, it means if you can structure the deal right and you're willing to do that, you can fix that broken chain and allow all the other transactions to complete. Obviously, if it's a good deal for you. Another case is that say somebody is looking to sell a property and the solicitor is dealing with a sale and then the buyer has pulled out last minute but the seller was relying on that to go through so that they can use the funds for something else and essentially in these cases what the each of the professionals do all they do is suggest that they have a property investor that they know that might be interested to step in and purchase or complete on a transaction and that's how we make the introduction so you can see now how professionals that work in this sector that if we build those relationships can really benefit us with those off-market leads. A final example in property professionals before we move on to strategy number two is builders and tradespeople that work in this sector. So builders, obviously people that are doing renovations on property, but tradespeople such as carpenters, electricians, all the people that work within the property sector. Now they'll be working with the owners of properties, they'll be doing works on those properties, and sometimes they'll come across people they're speaking to who, for example, may want to do a renovation on a property, and that renovation costs us significantly higher than they thought once a builder had given the quote, and they thought, well, actually, maybe I'm not sure, maybe I might even sell, and all they will do, they will just suggest, look, I work with somebody who purchases property if you want I can put you in touch with them to have a chat and remember none of these things are firstly guaranteed to result in anything and secondly you're not committed to any of these leads in terms of being able of being having to purchase those properties what they are are leads they're conversation starters to allow you to explore and see if it's something you're interested in or something you can do because often there's a problem and what you're doing is stepping in to fix that problem so that they're not going off to the estate agent to sell it in the traditional way if you watched this far in the video, I'm assuming that you're enjoying this content. And what I'd like to do is ask a little favor. If you are enjoying this content, maybe some of the other videos on the channel as well, then please just press that subscribe button. It's absolutely free, it doesn't cost you a penny, and it really helps me by YouTube getting this content out to more people and also letting you know when these videos are being released. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and let's now crack on with the rest of the video. Strategy number two is marketing direct to vendors. And there are many different ways that we can do this. Some of my favorite ones are letters direct to Pacific property owners. And so these are people that, for example, have a property and we're interested in reaching out to them to have a conversation with them to see whether they'd be open to selling those properties. And I think this works particularly well if it's a portfolio landlord that may have several properties, but it enables you to target Pacific people as opposed to doing general marketing. And one of the ways to be able to access lists of people who own property in this way, for example, HMO License Register has a list of all the people that have HMOs in a particular area. And this is public information. So what that means is that shows you who owns what properties and you can reach out to them, have a conversation with them, see if they'd be open to selling a property uh, to you. Or maybe they might be looking to downsize, retire particularly with all the changes that have been happening in the market right now. Some landlords are reducing their portfolios, other are e others are even exiting out of the market because the way they've structured their portfolio when they started their business is very different to how most people are doing it right now. So that means it's no longer as tax efficient as it was. There's also lots of changes in regulation and compliance. And some landlords are thinking, hey, look, you know, I've had a good run at this and maybe time is now to exit. But they might be considering this as opposed to having made the decision already listed them on the market. And essentially what you're doing is kind of competing with the estate agent but getting in there first to have a conversation with them and also remember there's a benefit that you could structure a number of transactions around their particular needs you could help them benefit in terms of taxation by structuring the deals in the right way for example spreading them over a number of years so they can utilize a capital gains allowance 
Another form of direct to vendor marketing is when you're sending a wider message to a wider audience, but it's less targeted. And what we're talking about here is like leaflets or newspaper adverts, where the people that are receiving the message, you don't even know if they own a property, never mind maybe wanting to sell a property. So the message just goes to a much more wider audience that you're a buyer of property, you're looking for a certain type of property. If they're interested in selling property, they need to reach out to you and have a chat. And this is very similar to, for example, how estate agents would market, where they market to a wider audience and area and say, hey, look, we can sell your property. And you're doing a similar thing and say, rather than saying you can sell the property, you're saying you will buy the property direct. And there's many reasons why some people will do that, as some of them we mentioned earlier on. People want a discreet sale. They don't want all the neighbors nosing around, coming and looking at the property, kicking the tires as it were. What they want to do is get things wrapped up and not maybe have the fees that they'd have with an estate agent as well, because some of those fees can mount up to quite a bit of money. When it comes to marketing in this way, the way I think about it, it's a little bit like fishing. You can either have a fishing rod with a particular type of bait and then they attract a certain type of fish. You can tell I don't do a lot of fishing. But what that does is you're much more targeted in your approach in terms of what you're trying to attract. And that's essentially what your letter does. A letter is much more targeted, is much more specific. But when you're sending out leaflets and carpet bombing whole areas and streets because that's the uh, area that you're interested in or you've got newspaper adverts running in that particular area, what essentially you are doing is just trying to get a wider message out. And with the fishing analogies, really you're casting a big net, you're just throwing the net out there and just see what you can scoop up and then have a conversation. So as many of those leads that you will generate in that way will be weaker leads, not the best quality leads, but you're still gonna be rummaging through those to find the ones that are gonna be the ones that you are looking for, because ultimately this is about lead generation to start those conversations. There's another video that's already on my channel where I talk about marketing director vendors and the kind of techniques that you can use. We'll link that one up here for you so you can watch that after this video. But one tip I can give you here is think about what we call in marketing terms open rates. What's the chances of the message that you're sending somebody that's actually going to get opened and even looked at? And one way you can increase that is when you're sending letters. Send letters in bright colour envelopes like your greens, yellows. And what that does, it just visually stands out. If you think about a letter that comes through the post and it's a different color, it's brightly colored, it just stands out from everything there. It's just gonna grab the person's attention. And then on top of that, if you can make sure the envelope is handwritten, you're going a step further in really capturing the attention of the person that's actually looking at that pile of post. And it just looks and much more seems much more personal and increases the chance of it actually even being opened and looked at versus let's say you've got leaflets uh, that have uh, another letters that come through the door that look like junk mail that really just get picked up they might get glanced at on the way to the bin and thrown straight into the bin and so remember what you're trying to do is not only get the message out to people but encourage people to look at the message and the next stage of that is to get the response before we jump into strategy number three, and as a thank you for watching this far and encouraging you to watch all the way to the end, I'm gonna give you an additional strategy after this one. Strategy number three is to tell everybody what you do. That sounds like a strange thing to do. What do you mean tell everybody what I do? What I mean is people need to know what you do in order for them to be able to help you. So if somebody knows their neighbor that's thinking about selling their property, it's not necessarily advertised just now, but you're having a conversation with them and they know you buy property, then there's much more likely they'll even mention that. Otherwise, why would they? They don't know what you do. This is why it's important that people know what you do. I remember years ago, people used to talk about, hey, it's not what you know, it's who you know that gets you somewhere in life. I think really these days it's no longer who you know, but who knows you. So it's important to get out there. And this is one of the reasons I do all this content online. So more people become aware of what we do. And I'm a big collaborator. I like working with other people in terms of building the business. So it means more and more opportunities come to us to have conversations around property and property investing. One of the easiest ways to tell everybody what you do is using social media. Not everybody's a fan of social media, but I'd say these days, because there's just so many platforms available, you can probably find one that suits your tastes and style in terms of how it works in for you to be able to start producing some visibility and people getting to see who you do. So for example, say on LinkedIn, if that was a platform that you're using, under your name, you have an opportunity to put a little tagline, what it is that you do. So this is where you're really subconsciously pushing this message out all the time of what you do. And how would you phrase that and what would that look like? So it could be something as simple as, I buy houses in Birmingham. But it could be even more clearer than that. For example, for myself, it might be, I buy four bedroom houses in Edgebaston. So when you're Pacific like that and you're clear in terms of what it is that you are looking for and people know what you're looking for, you're just increasing the chances significantly of those opportunities coming your way. Remember, if you're the world's best kept secret, 
that you might be very good at what you do, but if nobody knows what you do, how is it that you're gonna ever attract any of those potential leads from people looking to sell their property? Now, you can be more proactive about this as well in an online and an offline way as well. Online being being visible in, say, uh, active groups and such as Facebook groups, or offline is a networking event. So, uh, as you may know, I run my own property network meeting, which we haven't been able to over the last year and a half or so, but hopefully we'll be restarting very soon. And it is an opportunity to bring people together, like-minded people who learn from each other, learn from speakers that I'll be bringing and put onto the stage, and also content that I shared as well. But ultimately what it does, it brings opportunities for potential business to be done myself and other people and even people in the room and so I've been a big fan of going to network meetings from the very beginning of the early ones I started to attend there weren't very many in those days but these days if you look around there are just so many network meetings uh, around with property network meetings remember you'll be in a room full of other property investors that may be wanting to do similar things so your conversation starter might be a little bit different but ultimately what you're doing is looking for people that might be looking to sell either in that room or people they know that might be looking to sell and there might be some introduction fees and stuff and hey look if you get a great deal out of it I'd say it's worth it but a better place to look at is business network meetings and why is business network meetings a better place to find property when you're looking to buy direct from owners the reason being because often people in business that do quite well they tend to put that money into property and build assets in that way now what you find over time is some of those situations, circumstances might change and they might be considering selling but haven't actually made the decision yet to appoint an estate agent to sell that property for them. And when people know that you're the person that buys property and you can have those conversations, you can structure deals in a more creative way as well rather than just the one method that the estate agent might be able to do, then you are certainly gonna become the kind of person that will get referred to in these business networking events. But ultimately, all this is about you telling everybody what is it that you do with clarity. As a thank you for watching this far, I have a bonus strategy for you. Now, this strategy is a little bit different in the sense that you're communicating with the vendor directly. However, these properties are on market, but it still means that you get in front of the owner. So what we hear, what we're doing is we're looking for properties that are on market directly by the owner. So for example, there'll be certain websites that you might see online where the owner advertises the property themselves, such as for example, Purple Bricks, I think use this method as well, where the owner can do the viewings of the property. Now here, just to be really clear, I'm not suggesting in any way that you bypass the agent to try and exclude them from the fees, but what you're doing is getting the opportunity to sit in front of the owner to have a direct conversation with them to see if there's some way that you could structure a deal. Because remember, if the more creative you are in trying to find solutions to what the owner actually wants, the more chances you are of doing deals. And if you haven't already, then we'll link up that video for you to watch up here where I talk about creative deals and ways to control property rather than just purchasing property as well in order to make money from property. Another great place to find properties that are for sale by the owner is on Gumtree. So you have a section there where people can sell properties directly. They don't necessarily have to be agents. Where generally on Rightmove and Zoopla, you find that the people that are selling property there, they are agents, although they are a couple of companies that will use the model that allow the owner to do the viewings. And of course, if you Google for sale by owner, you'll find a number of other websites as well where owners are allowed to advertise properties directly. And essentially what we're doing, we wanna get in front of the owner, start having that conversation and finding those opportunities. To summarize the strategies, you have those where you work with other professionals in the sector and generate leads that way. Or you can do marketing direct to vendors to get those conversations started that way. And the third way being telling everybody what you do, utilizing things like networking events so people get to know what you do in your area so you're generating leads that way. And of course the bonus one, look for websites where the owner is advertising the property directly themselves to sell. Hey look, if you've enjoyed this content, then YouTube tells me you are absolutely gonna love the video we've got lined up over here next for you. But just before you do that, make sure if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then click on my face down here to subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you on this next video just over here.